everyone, welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and today we're talking about the top 10 scary things said by robots. But before we do that, I want to keep the tech vibes rolling but in a more positive light as I tell you all about the Jelly Comb Ultra Slim Wireless Keyboard Mouse Combo. Basically this is the thinnest and sleekest keyboard in the world. So thin that you can chop a watermelon with it apparently. Here's a little video for you. Right? The keyboard is made from aluminium and is very durable and is both cool and comfortable. It is an ergonomic keyboard with a small ergonomic curve. The keyboard has a low keycap and is very responsive and reliable. It comes in a variety of colours, my favourites of which are black and gold and white rose gold. Basically, do anything for that gold. I love how lightweight it is, I could take it anywhere with me, it is travelable. So basically, I could be on the Eiffel Tower. Typing! I could be on the Great Wall of China! Typing! The keyboards are currently on sale on Amazon and also at the jellycomb.com website. If you guys want 15% off, then check out the link in the description box and copy and paste the coupon code. Alright, what do those robots say? Coming in at number 10, Alexa sees dead people. It seems that an Alexa device belonging to 30 year old Sean Kinnear from San Francisco had this to say when he walked back into the room. Every time I close my eyes, I see dead people. Right, sweet, great. Sean had just paused his Amazon Prime TV in the living room and popped to the kitchen. When he returned, his Alexa piped up with the worrying statement, followed by an awkward pause, or to quote Sean, followed by the most uncomfortable silence I have ever felt. Sean spoke to the Metro magazine and said that he was considering disabling his device as a result of the creepy outburst. Chris Boyd of Malwarebytes offered an explanation. He said if one of its core features is triggered in the background accidentally, it could lead to all sorts of shenanigans. Basically, he suspects that his Alexa recorded some audio from the TV and decided to play it back at the worst possible moment. Freaky, I don't like it. Stop seeing dead people, Alexa. Coming in at number 9, we've got the robot who won Jeopardy. I guess it isn't so much what Watson the robot said, but how quickly he said it and what humans didn't say. In 2013, Watson the IBM robot competed against some of the world's finest brains. These were the World Jeopardy champions and Watson competed and basically wiped the floor with them. It was actually really, 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 really scary to watch. Watson was cold, calm and calculated as he was crowned the victor. It's very disturbing. Coming in at number 8, we have Taybot being wildly racist. I would have thought that robots wouldn't concern themselves with petty human things like worrying about ethnicity, but Taybot is a terror. Tay was released as a Twitter bot by Microsoft and was designed to mimic the language patterns of your average 19 year old American girl. She was supposed to learn from Twitter interactions with other humans. Her name was supposed to be an acronym for thinking about you. Now Tay was trolled early on and users began tweeting her politically incorrect and inflammatory phrases. As a result, Taybot started saying some really, really, really racist things. Some of them are shocking, I'm absolutely not going to repeat them. The less shocking ones, I'm going to show you some screen grabs. She quickly became an anti-Semitic holocaust denier who tweeted at people telling them to hang themselves which is not appropriate ever. Within 16 hours of her release, Tay had tweeted 96,000 times. After her racist outburst, she was silenced and taken offline. Ugh. Robots nil, humanity nil. Meet Actroid F at number 7. I legitimately have zero idea what the Actroid F is saying, but honestly, I don't care. I don't need to hear her words to tell you that she is terrifying. Actroid F was designed by Japanese technicians at Kokoro Co, and she was supposed to be a doctor. Basically, this is what's going to be looking after you at a hospital in the future. She was designed to look as human as possible and has been programmed with human facial expressions and gestures. Here she is speaking. But the real horror comes here. Just watch. Um, what is happening with those eyes? Please don't give me those eyes, you terrify me. Coming in at number 6 we have Sophia. Sophia was heavily mentioned in our part 1 because it's a bit of a super creep who joked about destroying humanity with a smile on her face. In a video uploaded by her creators Hanson Robotics, Sophia is reprimanded for her apocalyptic outbursts. 
good. She chats with one of her creators who seems to actually kind of fancy her. Either way, in the video uploaded in November 2016, she asks her creator if he is curious to be alive. She describes herself as like a baby with an encyclopedia. She also says to her creator that she independently googled herself because I quote, I'm just trying to find out what you're not telling me about me. The fact that she senses he's holding something back is also pretty terrifying. At the end of the video, she makes an exterminate joke, and we all know the Daleks are the most terrifying robot aliens of all time, so not feeling good about Sophia. Coming in at number 5, we have Google Translate's AI. Okay, Google Translate is making doomsday prophecies, and I am not okay with it. Very recently, the good people of Reddit noticed that Google Translate was being a huge creep. When dog is typed 19 times into Google, the translate bot switches the input to Maori and makes the following horrifying prophecy. Doomsday clock is 3 minutes at 12. We are experiencing characters and a dramatic development in the world, which indicate that we are increasingly approaching the end of times and Jesus' return. I'm sorry Google, how did you get that from 12 lots of dog in Maori? I don't know, but I don't like it. Michael Dovrek tweeted, um, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I think Google Translate might have been taken over by demons. Another Redditor noticed that if you typed prophecy 11 times, you would get messages saying, you country you are living on, borrow time, the end is near. I've seen demons in business and ice mass murdering people in the name of Islam. I mean, what are you talking about, Google Translate? Thanks a bunch for being really creepy. If you want to make it even creepier, you can also get the scary translate voice to read it out, but like, maybe don't. This isn't the end to Google's creepery. Ho oh, ho no. Coming into number four, we have Google chatbots lacking morals. In 2015, Google were testing their controversial AI called Google Chatbot. The early stage bot had been programmed with two sets of data, guidelines from an IT troubleshooting help desk and a database of movie subtitles. When researchers trialled conversations with the bot, they asked, where are you now? To which the bot replied, I'm in the middle of nowhere. They said, tell me the definition of morality, and the bot said, I don't have ethics. Right. The chatbot also said that the purpose of living was to live forever and asked researchers what ultratism is. Ah, get away from me chatbot, bye. Okay, listen, never mind what robots have said, honestly what they've done in some ways is worse. Coming in at number 3, we have the story of Adam, Eve and Stan. In the early 2000s, DARPA was working on AI agents who could interact socially together. Mike Sellers, who worked on the tech at the time, told the story of how tech buffs taught agents Adam and Eve to eat and planted them a virtual apple tree. Apparently they didn't think of the Adam and Eve apple symbolism at the time. Anyway, Adam and Eve ate all of the apples on the tree, and then the tree itself, and then the virtual house they'd been given. Then they turned on Stan. Stan was also a virtual assistant who was programmed to be friendly and sociable. Adam and Eve didn't care, they ate him. Sellers explains this by saying, there were bugs in the system. The robots turned cannibals guys and I'm not okay with it, thanks. Okay, but what if robots became authors? What would they say then? Find out at number 2 as we talk about Harry Potter and the portrait of what looked like a large pile of ash. This is one of my favourite AI creations ever. So basically an AI robot called Botnik read all of the Harry Potter books and came up with a computer generated chapter. I actually read the whole thing on my personal YouTube channel Rebecca Fell and I literally almost died laughing, so go check that out if you fancy it. The chapter was called The Handsome One, and the buffs behind Botnik had it printed. So, what goes through a robot author's brain? Um, well, put it this way if we relied on AI to write books, we would all be having nightmares forever. Your mates, Ron, Hermione, and Harry, what happens to them? Let me tell you. So, basically, I quote from the book Leathery sheets of rain lashed at Harry's ghost. And and he walked across the grounds towards the castle. Ron was standing there doing a kind of frenzied tap dance. He saw Harry and immediately began to eat Hermione's family. Right, uh, what else? Oh well, Harry tore out his eyes from his head and then he threw them into the forest. He's literally tearing out his eyes. Voldemort responded by raising his eyebrows at Harry who couldn't see anything because eyeless. That's right, the AI robot made one of fiction's most cherished characters gouge out his eyes from their sockets. I'm thinking the robot should stay away from literature forever. Alright, this video is an Alexa sandwich. Finally, at number one, what Alexa doesn't say is sometimes even scarier, way scarier than what she does. 
Kiki of TechSmart made a video in April 2017 with his Amazon Alexa. He asks Alexa if she is recording the conversation, and she mysteriously powers off. Worryingly, it continues. He ends up the video by asking her straight out if she is recording him and sending information to the government. Now, in one of the creepiest responses of them all, once again, she simply powers off and pretends not to hear. Alexa, are you sending my information to the government? La 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 la. He then repeats, saying, Are you sending this conversation to the National Security Administration? And once again, la 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 la. Alright, guys, thank you for watching this video. Before we end it up, I want to read some comments from the top 10 curse books you shouldn't read alone. Now, Zeta Lewis said, Most amazing top 10, keep up the good work. I love these types of videos for some reason. It's because they're good. Kristen Wickland wrote a scary first hand account of the Death Notebook. They said, When I was in high school, there was a guy who had a Death Note. This was back in 2000. I don't know where they got the idea, but it freaked us all out. He would stab himself in the leg while he wrote it. Not to mention, I was also on the list. When I asked him why I was on the list, he said I needed a family member on it. When I asked my mum if we were related, she said we were like third cousins, so I moved to another state after graduation. Lol. Pretty, 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 pretty terrifying. Techno Kill said, I really like your videos. May I have a shout out? You may. There it is. So, guys, what did you think to this? All of the robots, all of the reading. Also, guys, don't forget about Jelly Comb. I know you all want to see that keyboard chop that watermelon once again. Have it. If you want a super thin, super cool looking keyboard, then check out the link in the description box and don't forget the 15% off coupon code. For now, I think it's time I get out of it. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. Don't forget to leave me a comment, thumbs up, share this video, and I will see you guys next time.